Many students are kind of confused about, you know, when we can sustain non-NASH strategy profiles or outcome uh, in a repeated game and when we can't. Well, if the repeated game is a finite horizon, well then playing some strategies different than Nash equilibrium may or may not be sustained. Okay? Non-Nash strategy, uh, non-Nash stage game strategy, or okay? So that's, that's important. Non-Nash uh, stage game Payoff, let's talk about payoff, forget about strategy. So for example, in the uh, prisoner's dilemma, um, the 2-2 two -two is a non-Nash uh, uh, payoff, right? 0-3 also, uh, 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 I mean, I'm sorry for my horrible metrics here. Uh, if you like, I can make it a nicer. Uh, by the way, let's call it CDCD -CD because, well, this is what standard uh, name of the strategies in Prisoner's Dilemma, right? So let's stick to that. So here, the non-Nash stage game payoffs are 2, 2, 0, 3, 3, 0. I mean, everything, other, every feasible payoff other than 1, 1 is a non-Nash stage game payoff. So in a repeated game, non-Nash stage game payoffs can be part of Subgame perfect Nash equilibrium can be, all right, uh, if one, uh, the game is repeated uh, indefinitely, meaning uh, it's an infinite horizon, meaning we play this, uh, for example, Prisoner's Dilemma game forever, all right, or and two, uh, there exists more than uh, one Nash equilibrium of the stage game. Well, why do I need the second one? Okay, so the second one is critical. So let's suppose we don't repeat this game indefinitely, all right? I mean, everybody knows that there is an end to this game. And more importantly, I mean, uh, in reality, we all know that there's an end to everything, right? I mean, we die, you know, things die, etc. So we know everything has an end. Has, everything has an expiration date, so uh, does the games. But the problem is, or the thing is, do we know as players, do we know when exactly the game will be over? If we all know about this, that's what exactly we mean by finite horizon repeated game. If players don't know exactly when the expiration date is, and have some beliefs about, well, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe... You see what? I, well, then we can talk about some sort of infinite horizon because players cannot really agree on when exactly or cannot be sure about when exactly, with what probability one, uh, what is the t time of the expression. So that is more like what uh, infinite horizon repeated game is trying to capture. And because of this, in many industrial organization applications during 1980s, uh, 1990s, for example, they worked very much on repeated games because, uh, right, I mean, the firms compete with each other and they don't really know when this competition is going to end. And so when they play it, uh, the, the best approximation as a modeler is like using the infinite horizon repeated game rather than a finite horizon repeated game. Um, and also sometimes in some experiments, uh, people kind of tell the uh, subjects the game is going to end, but we are going to toss a coin, all right? So with some probability, the game will end, obviously, but with some probability, it may keep continue, all right? Or they say the game is going to end, but we don't tell you when, all right? So therefore, players, when they choose their actions, they don't know if it is the last stage or not. All right, so if, again, the game has an infinite horizon, uh, non-Nash stage game payoffs can be part of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. That's because future is very sort of long, right? It's like infinite horizon. And so if you screw me today, uh, I'm going to punish you for the rest of your life. And so you're going to regret your screwing me today uh, strategy. So you're going to behave nicely to me and same, uh, same for me. And hence, we can sustain almost everything as a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. That's what Folk theorem basically says. 
However, if the game has a finite horizon, all right, two stage, right? We're gonna play today and then tomorrow and then uh, we're gonna die. Well, then obviously at the last stage, stage T, let's call it, um, I mean, why am I still cooperate with you? Because I know the game is gonna be over tomorrow. This is the only chance I have. So if we are playing Prisoner's Dilemma and I know that this is our last stage, actually, I'm not going to treat this game different than standard stage game uh, Prisoner's Dilemma, right? So if I believe that you're gonna play C, obviously, if I am trying to maximize my own profit, I'm gonna screw you and play D and get three. You see what I mean? So therefore, therefore, in a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, in a finite horizon game like Prisoner's Dilemma, CC or any other non-Nash stage game payoffs cannot be achieved in the last stage. It has to be one of the Nash equilibrium payoffs. Well, the thing is, because there's a unique Nash equilibrium in uh, Prisoner's Dilemma, unfortunately, whether you repeat this game two periods or 10 periods or 100 periods, it is irrelevant. Uh, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, the unique subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is going to be repeating the Nash stage game Nash over and over again. There's going to be nothing else. Well, however, some games actually, I think I solved one example in one of my lecture videos. If there are more than one Nash equilibrium, like two pure strategy Nash equilibrium, well, by the way, uh, in many games, sort of nice games, the number of Nash equilibrium is usually odd, meaning if you found uh, two pure strategy Nash equilibrium, trust me, there should be another Nash, uh, pure or mixed, doesn't matter, but usually the number of Nash equilibrium is, is, is odd number or infinite, okay? Uh, there's a nice theorem about this. Um, so uh, what I want to say, if there's more than one Nash equilibrium, well, then we can, we may actually uh, sort of uh, achieve non-Nash stage game payoffs as a part of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. And how? Well, here's the thing is like what we can do in those games, uh, we can play in period one non-Nash strategy or non-Nash payoff. But in period two, what we can uh, sort of guarantee is that if player one deviates, we can punish him. If player two deviates, we can, we can punish him. So we shouldn't be punishing both of them because only one player deviated. So because if there's a unique Nash equilibrium, unfortunately we have to, I mean the players, how, how should I say it? Uh, the punishment will also punish both players. Because remember in the last stage or in the last stages, players must be playing Nash Equilibrium. In, again, I'm talking about um, finite horizon repeated games. However, when we have multiple Nash Equilibrium, well then we can still sustain that at the last stage or stages they're gonna play Nash. But the thing is, uh, we are going to uh, sort of force them play Nash Equilibrium where player one uh, favor the least because he deviated previously or if player two deviated previously we are going to force the players to play uh, the Nash equilibrium that is least favored by player two this time all right and so because we can individualize punishments we can then sustain non-Nash stage game payoffs even though the game is a finite horizon game okay uh, but again, because the Nash Equilibrium has a unique Nash Equilibrium, uh, the stage game, a unique stage game Nash Equilibrium, unfortunately, we can't sustain anything other than 1-1 one, one in, uh, in, in any form of repeated game of Prisoner's Dilemma. But in many other games, we can. And in fact, um, Benoit and, and uh, 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 Krishna, I hope I am not writing his name wrong. Uh, Vijay Krishna, uh, he's a professor at Penn State University. Benoit, he was my professor when, when I was at NYU. I think he's in, in London now, uh, LSE. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, they have a paper published around a, towards the end of 80s or early 90s, I'm not sure. Uh, what they basically show is that 
any finite horizon repeated game with more than one Nash equilibrium, uh, they prove Folk-like theorem. If they take this uh, finite horizon T uh, to infinity, I mean, if T is large enough, but not infinity exactly, but very large, well, then they can approximate almost all the payoffs. But again, they need at least uh, two Nash equilibrium. I mean, the stage game should have at least two Nash equilibrium. So they have a very nice paper about that. 